What's up guys, Spin Firearms here, and today we're going to be discussing three handguns that I think are at the absolute top of the concealed carry market, that at the same time you are not paying an arm and a leg for. When it comes down to concealed carry, there's a very, very small percentage of people who can carry a $2,500 handgun, a $2,000 handgun, and so on. Now obviously we could all go out and get it, but at the same time, does that really make sense for everyday carry? A firearm that could potentially be taken away from you, whatever the case um, may be, right? And on top of that, a lot of these more expensive handguns need a little bit more fine tuning. It can be a little bit more finicky and, you know, have a harder time finding parts, magazines, stuff like that. So for me, when it comes down to concealed carry, I like the sweet spot of somewhere in between $350 to $400 and up to about $800. I think that's the sweet spot where you have aftermarket um, availability, you have holsters, you have aftermarket parts. You literally can find every single thing you could ever want for the handguns in that price range if you stick to a major brand. So that's how I came up with these three handguns right here. And on top of that, how they perform at the range. But before we get started, hit the like button, drop a comment down below and subscribe. Let's talk about what we have in front of me, right? First off is going to be a Glock 48 that has been safety checked and cleared. Now what's interesting about this Glock 48 is it's before it came out with the MOS edition. So this is the first release of the Glock 43X and 48 and it came with this awesome stainless slide. Now I really like this color so that's one thing that's always attracted me to it and I finally got my hands on one so shout out to Hag. Anyways this doesn't have a rail and it doesn't have an optics um, ready system but you can just Take that out of your mind because most 48s being sold right now, almost all 48s being sold right now, have an optics uh, mount or a rail. So you can do that just like these other handguns in front of me, other than the shield, which we'll talk about. So this, you can put a light on, an optic on, and so on nowadays. Next up, the Springfield Armory Hellcat Pro, but the Comp. The Comp is the newest version from the Hellcat line from Springfield Armory. And man, did they knock it out of the park. In my opinion, um, this is one of the greatest handguns to ever be released for concealed carry. Now, when we talk about concealed carry oriented handguns, typically, you know, Glock 19s can pass as concealed carry oriented. But at the same time, um, in my opinion, concealed car carry oriented means a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller, a little bit easier to carry um, on a day to day basis, especially while doing activities. Then the newest release out of these three, and in my opinion, uh, one of the greatest releases as well, just like the Hellcat, the Smith & Wesson MMP9 Shield Plus Carry Comp. And this is the 4-inch, which we will be discussing. Now, something that's interesting is, and oh yeah, they're all safety check and cleared. Obviously, we're not over here filming with uh, loaded handguns. That'd be absolutely ridiculous. Anyways, what's interesting is, over here, we have a Hellcat. The original Hellcat, the P365, the Shield Plus, they're all handguns that, you know, took the market by storm because of their size. But what I've noticed is, as well as many other people is, as of late, the trend has gone to a little bit bigger handguns, right? So it sort of went from, uh, you know, the baby uh, Glocks, like the Glock 26, 27, the Smith & Wesson M&P 40Cs, the M&P 9Cs, you know, the basically the sub-compacts. Then from there, you know, it's made its way to the single stacks. We had single stacks coming out like crazy, and that was the biggest thing. People loved them. Uh, they were thin. And you know what? No one worry, worried about capacity. No one worried about red dots. There was a time where none of that stuff existed. They were just happy that you could get a handgun that's small, concealable, and you can carry everywhere with you. Then came these, like we just talked about. And if you're looking for a holster like this, code SPN for 10% off. This is the taco holster from Blacksmith Tactical. Double discrete carry clips, a claw, and a wedge. Don't let the pattern fool you. This is the best holster on the market. Like I said, code SPN for 10% off at Blacksmith Tactical. But what happened is there was a huge, you know, race to go out and get every one of these. People wanted them. They're small, pocket carry, all that. But the problem was people couldn't shoot them, especially the Hellcat. They're too snappy for people, which doesn't make sense to me because if you're training, you know, weekly then you learn the snappiness of it and you learn the handgun really well. It's just people don't shoot their smaller handguns enough. Now we are here. This is where everyone is typically starting to realize they like to be. This is probably the best of both worlds for most people. Now for me, I still prefer the Micro 9s as well as the Subcompacts, but a lot of people really loves the, love these, as do I. And honestly, these are all handguns worthy of uh, my, a spot in my carry rotation. First off, Glock 48. 10 plus 1 with OEM mags. I will only carry it with OEM mags. 
Um, and I've never had a problem with OEM mags in Glocks, especially this Glock 48. This thing just runs and it's probably one of the fastest, most accurate shooting handguns ever. Now you're going to say that's because it's got an Apex in it. No. Uh, I've shot Glock 48s without Apexes and they actually have some of the better Glock triggers. And on top of that, Glock triggers aren't even bad. They're just good. They're nothing special. They're just good workhorse defensive triggers. So that is fine with me. But the Apex does add a nice, reliable um, change to that trigger, which is what really brought me to it. A 4.19 inch barrel, so a little bit longer than Glock 19 this dimension. Same length as a Glock 19 in this dimension. But what you're getting is a slide that's compatible with a Glock 43 frame and a 43X frame, as well as the 48 frame, because the 43X and 48 are the exact same. But what's nice about it is the slide is super thin. But then you come down to the grip and it's a little bit wider. There is no texturing on Glocks. So you'll see every one of my Glocks that I carry or really enjoy shooting will have a pair of grips on it. These actually came on it and they're not that bad. Pretty dang comfortable. This also has night sights, but I'm pretty sure um, these didn't come on it. I think they were probably put on it. I don't know because this was a used handgun. But Glock, majority of the time, does not give you night sights right out of the box. And if so, you have to pay a little bit extra for them. So there's a couple downsides to picking the Glock out of these three. The positives are Glock's history of reliability. The other one is this is the most ergonomic handgun that I own. The 43X and the 48 feel the best in my hand, the most natural in my hand. And in my opinion, that really, really helps with shooting, as well as the Apex and so on. Now, I rarely ever go out at night. I'm a family, family man. I have a wife, three kids. I have a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. So I'd rather be with them, spending time with them. So I don't go out at night. I have no business to. So I don't carry with a flashlight. I carry with a handheld if I go out. And if I do have to go out at night, I do have a Hellcat set up with a TLR-7A on it. And that is my designated go out with a light firearm, right? But my average carry firearm, I keep them as simple as can be um, and as light as possible. And they run. Got that American flag backplate and love this thing. Never a single issue. And it's so broken in. It just feels so good. And what I mean broken in, everything is just butter. Buttery smooth. This handgun has been put through its paces, but was maintained the whole time. So this handgun is just unbelievable. You'd have to feel it to understand what I'm talking about, but it's one of the smoothest handguns that I own, especially in terms of a Glock. And this is one of the Glocks that's not um, squarey and boxy. It's actually pretty dang ergonomic. So I absolutely love my 48. Um, yeah. Next up, the Hellcat Pro Comp. Everything about this handgun was great. Right out of the box, it is one of your best options, hands down. You get 15 pl um, plus one capacity. They also have a 17 round mag where the Glock 48 holds 10 plus one. Nothing wrong with 10 plus one, that's plenty. Carry a backup mag, you're gonna get 11 rounds that are guaranteed to go bang. So if you can't get it done in 11 rounds, it's probably gonna be charges on you or you're just in a terrible situation you should have never got yourself in in the first place. So that's my thoughts on 11 rounds. 11 rounds is a lot. Count it out in your head. Make the firearm noise for every round. And you'll see how ridiculous it, you know, it comes, right? Anyways, Hellcat Pro, 15 rounds OEM mags. And of course, um, the Hellcat Pro comp and all the Hellcat mags, all the Springfield mags for that matter, are super good quality. Um, I absolutely love them. Now, on top of that, comes with night sights right out of the box, something a Glock typically will not give you, at least most Glocks won't, and they're actually pretty decent sights. I do prefer a three-dot system or a blacked-out rear with like a green or orange front, but these work just fine. On top of that, you can mitigate those sights and throw an optic on there because it is optics ready right from the box. Like I said, this comes like it nowadays, but it didn't at first, so this is good to go. You can always send that away if you buy a used Glock for milling or whatever. Um, on top of that, texturing is just on point. You will not see me putting grips on my Hellcats. I know I have it on one of my Hellcats, but super unnecessary. My carry Hellcat does not have it. The texturing is just awesome. On it. It's dang near perfect. Everything functions the way it should. Racking it is smooth. Everything locks back properly. It releases properly. You're not fighting this to release a slide. Everything does what it's supposed to. Great finish on the Hellcats. I've pocket carried Hellcats. I've carried them all winter long as my main or all summer long as my main carry carried them in the winter when I'm sweating from working and stuff like that and the finish is great no rusting no problems uh it does show scratches but not a big deal whatsoever as these firearms are meant to be carried meant to get some wear on them and on top of that looks sort of cool and shows that you've actually been using your handguns as much as you potentially should I get really 
weirded out when I see handguns that don't have any wear and tear from a holster. Now, these are my mains. Uh, my mains are my Glock 26s and stuff like that, where if you go look at those, you can see the wear and tear. But I do like seeing wear on handguns because it shows that you're practicing the way you should. Now, the Hellcat trigger is the only downside to it. It's not a negative. It's still a decent trigger. But the Apex just changes the trigger much better. A lot of people who struggle shooting the Hellcats and the Hellcat Pros, the problem is that trigger. It takes a little bit more getting used to. It's a little bit heavier, but once again, it's a defensive trigger at the end of the day. It gives you exactly what you need to defend yourself. And that's it. Awesome memory pads right here that are indented to help you fight a little bit of recoil. And if you have smaller hands, like on the old XDSs and stuff like that, you can throw your thumb up on that uh, take that lever that works just fine comes with the rail for the people who want to mount a light the tlr 7a other stuff like that are great i have that on my smaller hellcat um absolutely love this handgun you can throw on if i were to do it again for a carry optic i don't want to spend 600 500 uh so i really like the ccw defender from vortex it's one of my favorite dots um here we gotta turn it down i don't typically run it super bright uh but absolutely love that dot it's much smaller than it appears because the camera drowns it out. But the Hellcat Pro, I have like five or six total Hellcats right now from the series. Not a single problem. Tens of thousands of rounds between them. No issues at all. This I'm still putting through its paces, but it's been flawless through hundreds, if not a thousand rounds. I would have to double check. But super nice handgun. Absolutely love it. I would have to talk to my buddy about how many rounds he put through it and so on. Great gun. Nothing on this table has had a single malfunction. Next up, is what I would say is the best on the table. We almost went in reverse order as to what my favorites are, but it's so hard because here's the thing. When you take all three handguns, put them together, I could grab any one and be good the rest of my life. You say you have to pick one, I'd honestly have to flip a three-headed coin. It doesn't make sense, but you get the point. It is so hard to decide what is the best out of these because they all shoot different, but are so on point. They all do such a good job. So none of these are light years ahead of the others but if i had to pick it would be boom 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 and that's it some days it might be boom 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 it just depends but they're all amazing handguns and you don't have to be ashamed if you have this one but not these two or anything like that no they will all defend you when your life is on the line so you got to respect that mp9 shield plus carry comp man did smith and wasn't do a great job with this texturing is on point what i like is it's interesting i've never seen texturing on a whole handgun the whole handgun has micro texturing. Now, it's not aggressive like this, but it's there. And so, like, you don't need memory pads because you get a little texture here, a little texture here. Everywhere your hand touches, you're going to have a little bit more texturing to help fight that recoil. And I know it doesn't seem like much, but it does sort of add up, especially on these micro nines, right? Next up, awesome finish. Smith & Wesson knocks out of the park with finishes, as do all these other ones. Great finish. You're going to have no rest issues, no problems whatsoever. The serrations are very interesting because they really give it that draw. When you're in the gun store and you're walking around, you look at that, you're like, dang, what is that? That's because typically the straighter the lines, the easier it is and the cheaper it is to put on a handgun. So when you see them do something like this, you got to respect them going the extra mile um, to give us that because man, does it look really cool. It really does look cool. Optics ready, of course. This does not come with a rail, but they do make the TLR6 for it as they do for this. They make a TLR6. And they actually released the TLR6HL, I believe, with more lumens and a laser now. So now everyone can stop complaining about the TLR6 being too weak. I don't know what you guys are doing, but I'm not a soldier. <laughs> I'm not law enforcement. I respect the crap out of those people, but me, I'm a civilian. I don't need something going 100 yards with a light. No, I'm, I'm a civilian with kids, and I'm going to take care of that situation when it comes. And I hope it never does. Anyways, awesome little lightning cuts here here and an awesome big hole just like that hellcat pro comp awesome and i love how the site is behind um what do you call it those ports you have to respect that because otherwise there's no point in a yellow front sight not everyone likes running an optic so you're going to be blacking out that site with all the gases coming out here you put it behind yeah it gets dirty but it doesn't get washed out blown out or you it doesn't happen in one session so you can shoot all day long and not have any issues the sights are one of the best parts about this handgun they're perfect. They're not my favorite sight picture, but um, coming on a handgun from the box, they're great. They're the Night Fission or Night Fusion, or whatever it's called. Um, blacked out rear with a U-notch, textured, of course, and then that nice 
green that absolutely pops. Now, I can show you sights real quick if you're interested. There's a little bit of light coming through the window behind me, and they're still glowing really, really nice. You can see that Hellcat light um, front sight is a little bit bigger in terms of when it glows. I would say the Glock OEM night sights are the worst. <laughs> I'm just being real with you guys. But this handgun's also older and has been used a lot more and been exposed to, uh, you know, having a glow. So definitely 100% uh, Glock OEM sights are the weakest, but not typically. They're all going to be about the same. It's just that these are the oldest sights out of the bunch. These are brand new handguns, basically, within the last couple months or so. So that would explain that. Anyways, nice sight picture. Really like them. You do not need an optic at all for this handgun, but if you put one on there, once again, this will fit on there, and this is one of my favorite dots. It's small, but has a really nice window. Absolutely love it. Now, like I said, texturing is great. This right here is only going to be 10 plus 1, though, versus the 15 plus 1 on the Hellcat Pro, even though the Hellcat Pro is obviously longer. And this does come with a 13-round mag, and you can get a 15-round mag for it. So you can match capacity with the Hellcat Pro. It's just longer than the 15 when the 15-round mag is in it. And then there's that. 10 plus 1 on the right, 10 plus 1 on the left. The shield destroys it, and it's thinner than all these other options. This is the thinnest option, and I believe the lightest option out of the bunch. Yeah, it feels like it. Maybe the Hellcat Pro. I don't know. Hard to feel like that. But this handgun really shines with that trigger. The trigger is where the Shield Plus really shines and becomes such a shootable handgun. I'll show you the Hellcat Pro Apex trigger one more time because I think it's definitely wor a worthy upgrade. Just make sure you follow lubrication instructions and maintain your handguns. And typically you don't see any issues with Apex. The Apex really shines though on the Glock 48. I absolutely love it. I mean, this is my, because of how broken in this handgun is, I absolutely love it. I really do. This thing is absolutely amazing. I'm, it makes it way too hard to pick, honestly. They're all great handguns. If you have one of them, you don't need anything else, to be honest. They're all awesome. They all do their job, and you don't really need to discuss brands or anything like that, because at this point, they're just all good quality handguns that, honestly, I would you know, trust with my children's lives. So I think that's a big statement. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.